The movie kicks off with a young guy named Andrew Brigman. He's working out, getting ready because he just got into the US Army. He's super excited because he's leaving for Afghanistan tomorrow for his first mission. Andrew is a really nice guy, and he knows a lot about the US military. The night before his departure, he had a relaxed chat with his dad, William. William used to be in the US Navy, a Marine. He told Andrew how proud he was that his son was starting his first mission as an Army soldier. The next day, Brigman headed off to Afghanistan. Long story short, he made it to the country and started doing his job. He was in a squad led by a guy named Sergeant Wallace, who was a great leader. He always showed how to treat the local people with respect and kindness, without using violence. But then, something sad happened. Sergeant Wallace wanted to say hello to the people there to set a good example. Sadly, he stepped on a mine and lost his life. Three weeks later, a new sergeant named Deeks took over. Sergeant Deeks was quite different from Sergeant Wallace. He was tough and strict, a real contrast. Still, Sergeant Deeks was an experienced guy, having successfully completed three combat missions in the past. He was now in charge of Brigman's squad, and their mission was to find the location of a rebel bomb that had taken the lives of 24 U.S. soldiers over the last year. Sometime later, Brigman and his team set out for the tracked location. But Brigman noticed something odd about this mission. When he tried to be friendly to the local people there, Sergeant Deeks actually told them not to act kindly. He even asked Brigman about where he came from. In the end, Brigman shared that his dad had been in the Marine Corps. This assignment turned out to be a simple inspection because they didn't find anything suspicious in the area. In the evening, Brigman and the other soldiers huddled in a car to relax and joke around. Before long, they lit up some marijuana cigarettes, but Brigman didn't want to join in so he decided to visit Sergeant Deeks in his room. There he found Sergeant Deeks having a video call with his son, just like any regular dad. Afterward, Brigman quickly gave Sergeant Deeks a report about the bomb attack locations he had scouted. Without hesitation, Brigman asked Sergeant Deeks to promote him to team leader. Sergeant Deeks wasn't surprised by this request, as it turned out that six of Brigman's colleagues had also asked for promotions. He explained that he would consider Brigman's request but only if Brigman agreed to follow orders without question. The next morning, Brigman and his teammates gathered for breakfast, with Sergeant Deeks dishing out their meals one by one. After they finished eating, they came together again to start their daily tasks. But as they gathered, Sergeant Deeks suddenly called on anyone interested in becoming a team leader to step forward for a challenge. However, there were only two people who were up for it, Brigman and one of his buddies named Marquez. They both dove right into the competition for the team leader position. At first, Brigman seemed like he might lose, but that he did something kinda weird. He licked Marquez's ear, which totally grossed Marquez out. Brigman used that moment to strike back and take Marquez down. Eventually, Brigman won the team leader spot. Brigman looked super happy and proud, not caring that he'd won in a kinda gross way. Unfortunately, Sergeant Deeks was disappointed in Brigman. Later that afternoon, after they finished work, Brigman and his teammates went for a walk. They came across a group of soldiers helping one of their own who'd lost both legs in a bomb blast. Brigman felt really angry when he saw the terrorists' actions in Afghanistan. Sometime later, when Brigman was giving his report to Sergeant Deeks, he let out his frustration in front of the sergeant. Surprisingly, Sergeant Deeks was pleased by this, as it was the kind of attitude he wanted from Brigman. He emphasized that every team member needed to be tough and ruthless towards the enemy, not just plain and innocent like Brigman used to be. After that, Sergeant Deeks asked Brigman to come to a container. To Brigman's surprise, inside the container was a man they believed was a terrorist. Sergeant Deeks ordered Brigman to rough the man up without holding back. But no matter how angry Brigman was, he was still a kind-hearted young guy. Even when he tried to hit the man, he couldn't bring himself to do it. Seeing this, Sergeant Deeks was disappointed in Brigman and left. Sometime later, during lunch with his fellow team members, they were talking about Brigman's teammate Rayburn. It turns out that after Brigman couldn't bring himself to hurt the terrorist prisoner, Rayburn went ahead and beat the prisoner so badly that the man's face was messed up. That evening, Brigman was heading to Sergeant Deeks's room, but he accidentally saw Rayburn getting a gift from Sergeant Deeks. Rayburn had proved himself as a tough and unforgiving soldier, earning this special treatment. Brigman couldn't help but feel jealous and envious. 
The next day, Brinkman was all pumped up to tackle his tasks. Unfortunately, Surgeon Deeks asked him not to join and told him to wait in the car. On top of that, Surgeon Deeks made Rayburn the squad leader. Before long, they heard gunshots from where Brigman's friends were, so he rushed over to help them. But when Brigman got there, the battle was already over, and they found a civilian man who had been shot dead. Brigman noticed Rayburn was close to Surgeon Deeks, which fueled his jealousy. Shortly after, an elderly man arrived, looking shocked and started crying, because the man who got shot was his son. When Brigman came back from work, his colleagues seemed really happy, because they had managed to kill the man they were after. They celebrated by smoking marijuana. But Brigman was still deep in thought, wondering how anyone could feel happy after taking another person's life. Brigman went outside the headquarters and saw one of his Muslim colleagues praying. Before long, Sergeant Deeks showed up and told Brigman that he was too ordinary and better suited for a desk job in the military. However, Brigman refused and insisted that he still wanted to be out in the field. The next morning, Brigman wanted to wake up Rayburn, who was asleep. While doing so, he spotted a gift box from Sergeant Deeks to Rayburn, which he had noticed before. Carefully, Brigman tried to open the box quietly so as not to wake Rayburn. When he managed to open it, he found Russian-made grenades, the kind often used by terrorists in Afghanistan. In the afternoon, Brigman went up to Rayburn to get his statement about the civilian shooting that happened the day before. Rayburn had to sign it as part of the military procedure whenever there's a death. Brigman then asked Rayburn how he could be so sure that the man shot had a Russian-made grenade. The thing is, Rayburn was positioned 50 meters away from the civilian. But Rayburn didn't want to answer and instead felt suspicious of Brigman, thinking something was off with his teammates. Realizing things were fishy, Brigman thought about reporting the incident to the captain at the military camp. He believed Sergeant Deeks had ordered the civilian's intentional killing. Brigman was convinced that the man was just an unarmed civilian who got killed to make the mission seem successful. He got permission to meet the captain and started walking there secretly. But on the way, he spotted Sergeant Deeks heading to the captain's room too. In the end, Brigman decided to drop his plan. That evening, Brigman reached out to his father and told him about a terrible thing. His team had intentionally killed innocent civilians. William, his dad, immediately said he would contact the ICD, a team of investigators who handle violations of U.S. military law. The next day, Sergeant Deeks was called in for questioning by the ICD team. But during the questioning, he managed to escape. Meanwhile, Brigman was inspecting his team's military vehicle. To his shock, he found an AK-47, the kind terrorists often use. Brigman's suspicions were confirmed. His team had killed innocent civilians and falsely accused them of carrying weapons and grenades. In reality, it was his own team carrying those weapons. Before long, one of Brigman's colleagues asked him to come into a room. To his surprise, Sergeant Deeks and his buddies had figured out who had reported them to William and had reported Brigman's actions to the ICD. Hearing this, Brigman was filled with fear. When he arrived at the room, he hesitated to enter, because he worried that Surgeon Deeks and his friends might discover that he was the one who had blown the whistle to his father. When Brigman opened the door, he walked right into a shocking scene. Surgeon Deeks and some others were mercilessly beating up Marquez. To Brigman's surprise, he learned that Marquez had also reported their crimes to the ICD team. Luckily for Brigman, his secret actions hadn't been discovered yet, but Marquez wasn't as lucky. Sergeant Deeks and the others kept on beating Marquez in front of Brigman until he was badly hurt. Seeing this, Brigman felt terrible. He couldn't help but think about what might happen to him if they found out he had reported them. He'd probably be the one getting beaten like that. After that incident, Brigman called his father once more and asked him not to report Sergeant Deeks' actions to the ICD. He knew that if his dad reported it, he'd be in grave danger. As time passed, Brigman kept witnessing his team killing innocent civilians. These poor people were then falsely accused of carrying weapons and labeled as terrorists, even though the weapons actually belonged to Sergeant Deeks. Despite wanting to report or stop his team's actions, Brigman was also scared that they'd figure out his intentions and beat him up like they did to Marquez. With time, Brigman's mental state began to deteriorate due to the pressure from his teammates and Sergeant Deeks. Then one night, while in Sergeant Deeks's room, Brigman accidentally saw what was inside Deeks's bag, a bunch of illegal weapons. 
These were the same weapons that would be used to frame civilians Sergeant Deeks planned to kill next. Brigman couldn't believe why Sergeant Deeks would resort to such a wicked plan when the mission could have been completed differently. Shortly after, Sergeant Deeks came out of the bathroom. Instead of panicking, he intentionally opened his bag and showed everything to Brigman. Sergeant Deeks told Brigman that he was part of the team now because he knew everything. However, he made it clear that Brigman had to remain loyal to the team. Sergeant Deeks warned that if Brigman betrayed them and revealed their actions, his fate would be just like Marquez's or even worse. The next morning, while Brigman was practicing shooting, his colleagues started teasing him. He was already in a really bad state of mind. When he overheard them talking about phone calls with their parents, panic set in because he had previously reported their actions to his father. As time passed, Brigman continued to face bullying from his colleagues. Even Sergeant Deeks joined in, making it tough for Brigman, even during mealtimes. Normally, Sergeant Deeks would distribute food evenly to his team, but after seeing Brigman's disagreement with their actions, he refused to give food to Brigman. That night, Brigman's mental state had deteriorated further, so he went to sleep with a knife hidden under his pillow. He was scared that while he slept, his own teammates might ambush and harm him. When Brigman woke up from a nightmare, he found Sergeant Deeks right beside him. Brigman was terrified, fearing that he might be killed or attacked secretly by Sergeant Deeks. Meanwhile, Sergeant Deeks paid Brigman a visit to deliver a chilling threat, warning him not to expose any of his actions. He made sure to scare Brigman with dire consequences if he ever dared to reveal their crimes. The next day, Brigman called his father once more, but he couldn't bring himself to say anything. He just vented his frustration and cried as hard as he could. Sometime later, while walking through a residential area with his teammates, Rayburn instructed Brigman to lead the way. With a frightened look on his face, Brigman reluctantly walked alone at the front of the group, with all his teammates trailing behind. It was ironic that at that moment, Brigman, who should have been wary of enemy attacks, was actually more afraid of his own teammates. He couldn't help but suspect that they might shoot him in the back. Not long after, they suddenly came under enemy attack, so Rayburn threw a smoke bomb. In the thick fog of the smoke bomb, Brigman kept trying to locate his other teammates while shouting out for them. Sadly, no one responded to his calls. Eventually, Brigman found a teammate who had apprehended an elderly civilian. To his astonishment, Sergeant Deeks ordered Brigman to shoot and kill the old man. Initially, Brigman was utterly confused and didn't know what to do. He worried that refusing might jeopardize his safety. Eventually, he felt compelled to obey Sergeant Deeks' orders. Brigman took a deep breath, assumed a shooting stance, and stood ready. Sergeant Deeks stood beside him to supervise and give orders. When the countdown reached three, Brigman had to end the old man's life, while Sergeant Deeks prepared to throw a grenade to make it look like they were in a battle. In the end, Brigman killed those innocent civilians. Later, when he returned to headquarters, he found all his teammates celebrating, hailing him as no longer plain and innocent, but now a tough and unforgiving soldier. However, Brigman felt quite the opposite. He was consumed with guilt because he had committed a terrible sin. The next day, after having breakfast, Brigman returned to his room and found Marquez there. However, he didn't see any of their other teammates around, so he was puzzled and asked Marquez where the others, including Sergeant Deeks, had gone. Marquez explained that all the members of Sergeant Deeks' team involved in the civilian killings had been arrested by the ICD, the United States Military Law Violation Investigation Department. After being brutally beaten earlier, Marquez had to undergo six weeks of treatment. While receiving treatment, Marquez had apparently told the ICD about all of Sergeant Deeks' crimes. He provided them with strong evidence that exposed the entire wrongdoing of the team, including Sergeant Deeks and Brigman. Upon hearing this news, Brigman panicked and was filled with fear, causing him to rush back to his room. Inside his room, Brigman was confused and didn't know what to do. He felt deeply remorseful, thinking that if he had known this would happen, he should have had the courage to report Sergeant Deeks rather than obeying his orders. In despair, Brigman even considered using his weapon to end his own life, but instead, he was taken into custody by the United States Military Criminal Investigation Command Center. Later, Brigman spotted Rayburn, who had finished being questioned and was headed to the detention cell. Soon after, Brigman was escorted into a car where Sergeant Deeks was present. Sergeant Deeks instructed Brigman 
not to utter a word to the investigators, but now Brigman no longer feared him. Seeing Brigman's newfound confidence, Sergeant Deeks seemed to become apprehensive. Upon arriving at their destination, Brigman was brought to meet his parents and their lawyer. The attorney urged Brigman to share all the details of the murder incident truthfully, without holding anything back. The movies end by telling us what happened to Brigman and Sergeant Deeks during the trial. Despite Brigman's efforts to defend himself, he was still sentenced to three years in prison. On the other hand, Sergeant Deeks received a life sentence. The moral lesson from the story is clear. We should always stand up against wrongdoing and injustice, even if it means facing tough consequences.